Hey guys, welcome back to Home Built. And this week, we're gonna finish off the bottom of the Alfa Ferrari and then I am going to start doing everything I can to get this car started. guys welcome back and uh those watching last week will have seen that i finally got the windows into the alfa ferrari and got it onto the ground and how good does it look i am so happy with the uh the, with the result the external part of the alfa ferrari is very close to done besides it being filthy it needs a wash and other things which can come later that's low priority if you missed it, I'll put a link up above so you can catch up. And as always, please think about subscribing. It really makes a difference. A um, few comments on last week. Uh, yeah, lots of people really uh, like the front end of the car coming together, which I really love. Some people uh, thought I should paint the horn rims uh, black so they're hidden behind the, behind the uh, grills. And I actually prefer the fact you can see them. It gives you this sort of large outer smaller inner and then these sort of hidden sort of other rings in behind i think i think it really adds to the look of the car so i'm quite happy with it the way they are everything else is coming along quite well just still waiting on springs and shocks so that is something i'm going to have to work on but uh, i ran out of time last week but we do need to do our last little thing on the cosmetics and that is fit the bonnet to the car so um a little bit of work to do on that let's get into it So to start with, I'm masking out the middle of the Lexan window just so that I don't get any overspray on it. And then go around and sand all the edges thoroughly, making sure that it's good keying so that the paint will stick. After a thorough clean, I hit it with some primer first just to uh, make sure there's some good adhesion and then I go over it with a nice satin black. Use the heat gun to uh, sort of speed up the process on these very cold days. Alright, so I just blacked out the edges around the Lexan window because I don't want to be able to see the sealant sort of through and it sort of looks ugly so that'll be a nice shape. So now it's time to fit the bonnet to the car. I'm so looking forward to this. You can see here I'm using a little bit of heat shrink on the end of these torsion arms. The factory had a nice plastic coating and I find the heat shrink is a uh, nice easy method to add on to them to just give a tidy finish. That is looking really, really, really good. That is exactly the vision that I had for this bonnet. With a couple of minor issues, let me take you over them now. So some of you might remember when I first made this bonnet bulge, it was this giant bulge and it looked really ugly, so I redid it and this bulge is perfect. It's as big as I can possibly go uh, to make it look good. When I built it, there was at least a 10 mil gap. And for some reason now, I think maybe I didn't account for the gaskets and things inside uh, this whole plenum setup and all the rest of it. And now it's basically, it's, it's, I think it's pretty much it is touching. So I am going to have to do something about that. And uh, I think I have a plan for that. I will show you now. And if I flip this open, so what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to come in and I'm going to cut a, uh, a panel off of this and add a flat piece in there. So it will slightly uh, diminish the diameter of the, uh, the in to inlet, but not a great deal. There's no other easy way to do this. I think the main thing is 
those that were following from the start will see I already cut this um, inlet down about uh, 70 mil. I cut 70 mil out of those runners. So there's not a lot of other options. So I think, yeah, a couple of flat panels means I'm gonna have to repaint the top of this, but uh, that is gonna be the easiest method. I definitely don't wanna add any more to the bonnet bulge. So that's what we're gonna do. But that trimming will come later. For the time being, this all fits and works. So um, the bonnet is on. I still have the issues with the PPF that I ruined just here. So uh, that is not great, but again, that's something I might tackle later. But for now, that is the front end of the Ferrari, all on, all together, bonnet window in, seeing the Ferrari uh, plenums coming through exactly how I pictured. I am loving the front end of this car, and uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's exactly how I pictured it. All right, well, cosmetically, it is looking just the way I need it to, so that means now I am gonna concentrate on doing everything I can to start getting that engine to run in that engine bay. Now, uh, there's still a bunch of things left to go to get it running. There's no fuel system in it at the moment. Uh, there's still a lot of wiring to go. Uh, like there's no battery in it. There's no, uh, lots of things connected up. I don't have to worry about cooling right now because to start with, I just wanna get it started. So the cooling can come later, but to start with, I'm gonna need oil, I'm gonna need fuel, and I'm gonna need power. So let's start working on the fuel first. So this is all set up now, the, uh, the fuel line. So uh, exiting the fuel tank, I've got to plug in one of the holes. I have the uh, dash 10 line going into the pre-filter. Then it swings around going into the fuel pump, fuel pressure regulator, post filter, uh, and then through the fuel lines up to the front. The return from the fuel pressure regulator comes up this way. So this is a deadhead system. So the fuel pressure is regulated um, basically back here and it keeps the pressure in the line going up to the front. Uh, this is the return, which has to come through and go up into uh, the tank. So let's get the car down now and start connecting up the return to the tank and then we can start looking at wiring up the fuel pump. Okay, so these are the little things that take a whole lot of time. So, um, if I can get the camera to, to focus in here. Okay, so you can see here on my top of my fuel tank that's in here, I have my breather on this side. It has a Raceworks rollover valve on there and it goes through down under the car. So there's my breather, I need the breather. But I also need to have my fuel return. I, my other fitting, when I built the car, I didn't factor in the motor for the rear window, and that's what that is there. So um, if you can see that fitting sitting just, just below there, the motor that's above, I need to be able to get a fitting in that. But uh, I've just uh, got off the phone with Jamie at Raceworks, and I'm going to get a banjo fitting to go into that. So hopefully it fits under the motor, and uh, I can get it all the way back over to my other bulkhead fitting, which is here, uh, to go back under the car to the fuel pressure regulator. Raceworks uh, will probably have that out to me in a day or so. So the next thing I need to do is start looking at this bundle of wires in the boot here. And one of these wires is to my fuel pump. So I need to then set up my relay box, which goes in this corner here with the relay and the power for the fuel pump. 
All right, so now I'm gonna start trying to put in the rear relay box. Now I've got, um, to start with, I'm gonna put in three relays just because it's easier to do it now. I only really need the one for the fuel pump. That is gonna work relatively normally. Basically, your power comes in from the ECU. Uh, the wire is a little bit small. I don't wanna run the power straight from that. So basically all you do is this will switch on to main power. And that's what a relay does. It's an electronically controlled switch, basically. So um, that can then switch on bigger power going to the pump and I don't have to worry about sort of too much draw coming through the ECU, etc. Now, the, these other two relays are gonna be for the exhaust valve. So um, if you've seen in the past, I built this car with a switchable exhaust. Now I want relays for them and I need one to open the uh, exhaust and another one to close the exhaust. And I'm gonna use the same method as um, electric window switches. Now it took me a while to grasp how an electric window switch works because you basically have two wires going into a uh, electric motor, one positive, one negative. But to uh, make it go the other way, you need to switch that around. And then you've got positive and negative going in the opposite way so the motor won't go in the opposite direction. That's the same with the exhaust valve. Now, I took me a while to understand how an electric window switch worked because you need to be able to switch both uh, terminals. So you almost need two switches to do one action. But um, the way you do it, it's, it's actually quite simple. So let me see if I can explain how electric window switches and how exhaust switches work. So um, in my exhaust, I have two separate buttons, um, but electric windows are basically like two buttons or two switches uh, next to each other. They're generally linked in together, but they're still basically two separate switches that have just been put together. And basically, if you imagine one of the switches, you have two terminals in the switch and a switch is either usually normally closed and then when you press the switch, it connects to the other side and completes the circuit and you get the power going to the unit. So the way that electric window switches work, which took me a while to completely grasp, is that if you imagine on one side of the electric window switch, in its normally closed position, this terminal is negative, this terminal is positive, and same with the other side. In the off position, when you're not touching it, it's connecting negative through, and if you imagine my arm as actually um, the cable going to the motor, and there's one switch on this side, and there's another switch on the other side, so another cable going to the motor. So when you're not touching, it's actually getting negative to both sides of the motor, so I'm not doing anything. As soon as you press the switch in one direction, it connects the positive, and then that goes down. So one side of the uh, motor gets positive, the other one's already got negative because it's not being touched, and that's how they work. So. That is what I'm doing now with uh, the electric window switches. I'm going to do that with these uh, relays. It gets even more complicated and I won't go into it, but the, with how the passenger side obviously has the passenger side electric window switch and the driver side and they both work the same. That gets slightly more complicated, but it all still sort of makes sense. In any case, what I'm doing is I'm using the same principle on the exhaust valves. So uh, I'm gonna connect up these relays and uh, yeah, if anybody was ever interested in that, hopefully that sort of makes a little bit more sense because it took me a while to, <laughs> to work it out. So I'm gonna wire up these relays now, get this relay box going. It's gonna be fuel pump and exhaust valve open, exhaust valve closed, and then these ones will be for air conditioning. So uh, let's start wiring up a relay box. Or it doesn't make for the best video, but I just spent the last uh, hour or two just doing the wiring on the back of the relay box. It's relatively straightforward. I just did a little scribble of sort of roughly what's going where and and uh, and how to sort of do it as a bit of a cheat sheet to make it quick. And uh, that's ready to go with a couple of spots for fuses for the fuel pump and for the exhaust valve so that I don't have to sort of pull this apart again too much get most of it done in one hit. So uh, now let's 
finish off just uh, connecting it up to the loom that's in there and then um, this part is pretty much done and we can start looking at a battery. I have my wiring done now so the wiring comes through goes through to the fuel pump and that is all wired up the relay's done this is the wiring for the exhaust valves which I can do later so now I need to bring it down and uh, let's finish off that fuel system it may only be a couple of minutes on the video but uh, it was just under 24 hours ago when I was talking to Raceworks about uh, my fuel return issue and the the banjo bolt has turned up already uh, so fast uh, and uh, hopefully this is going to do the job so that I can get my fuel return into the tank underneath that motor so fingers crossed it will fit Okay, and that worked perfectly. So the banjo fitting fit on. I actually opened up the little access port back there, which is how you put the uh, rear suspension in. And uh, that all comes down through to my bulkhead fittings going through underneath the car and then to the fuel pump. Return and uh, the breathers. All right, so now I'm going to fit my battery to the car. I'm using an Optima battery. I've used the same one in Harry for quite a while, um, yellow top. I like these things. You can mount them any way. They don't leak and uh, they last sort of well, sort of three times longer than, than the regular batteries. And uh, it's a testament on Harry. I leave Harry sitting for, you know, several weeks at a time. N not on the uh, battery tender. I do have one, but I just always forget to put it on. I think I'm going to use it again and then it sits three or four weeks. No drums, always starts up. Never had a problem with uh, running the battery down. So uh, this is going to be a good option for the Al Ferrari and uh, it's a good color too. So uh, let's get this fitted in there and then get some cables mounted up somehow to uh, the car, which actually makes me think, maybe before I put it in, I need to work out how I'm gonna fit my negative cable to the car. I need to make a battery terminal mount. You see what I mean? So here I'm using my nice heavy crimp tool to make some nice cable ends for the battery terminals and then sealing them up with a bit of heat shrink to finish them off. That's the negative cable done, and now we just finish off the positive cable that we've already laid in all the way up to the alternator. All right, battery is in, the terminals are on, heat shrunk and connected up, ready to go with uh, the battery in. I've still got to find the uh, battery tie down that I remember I made sometime, but I cannot find it. But uh, we can leave that in for now and move forward to the engine bay. All right, there is really not a lot of space underneath this engine to do a lot, but there was this unused mount, I think it was for the uh, old air conditioning compressor, and uh, I've used that to now connect up to uh, one of the sway bar mounts. The sway bar mount will still be able to bolt on over the top of that, so this will sort of go on and connect on where the sway bar connects on. There's a nice, good, solid uh, grounding strap to the engine itself, so uh, I think that part is done. I still can't believe how good this looks. I am annoyed about the bonnet that I'm gonna have to uh, trim those plenums again and, uh, and sort of make a, uh, a recess and a clearance for them to fit the bonnet, but that's details, it's all, uh, it's all doable. It just means I have to repaint the end of the, uh, the plenums again. It's not, it's not the end of the world. 
Overall, this thing is coming up amazing. Uh, the grounding strap now is in, all of the battery wiring is in, the fuel pump relay and wiring is in. So that side of things is all pretty much ready to go. There are still a few more things that I need to do before I can even start thinking about trying to start it, which uh, hopefully I'll tackle next week. No promises that I'm gonna start it next week, but I am ticking all those things off. I've got a fair bit to do with making sure the oiling system is gonna all work properly and things like that. So uh, stay tuned for that. Hopefully you'll join me next week. But uh, that's all the time I have this week. So I think that means it's time for Fun Tax with Mrs. Jeff. Hey guys, 2007 was an interesting year for Ferrari and Formula One, with lots of turmoil and controversy. So, in 2007, Ferrari was the only team to still receive tobacco sponsorship from its primary sponsor, Marlboro, who was owned by Philip Morris. In an effort to skirt around the European tobacco advertising ban, the car sported a red and white barcode instead. 2007 was also the end of traction control in Formula One, and from then on, all cars sported the same ECU. During the season, from the second race onwards, the McLarens, driven by Fernando Alonso and newcomer Lewis Hamilton, led the championship, with the Ferrari, driven by Kimi Raikkonen, trailing behind in third place. Controversy arose mid-season with Spygate, when McLaren was accused by Ferrari of stealing their technical information, resulting in the disqualification of a McLaren for the Constructors' Championship, although the driver's points were still counted. It came down to the final race of the season with Kimi Raikkonen winning the Drivers' Championship by one point and Lewis Hamilton and Fernando Alonso tying in second place. And 2007 still stands as the last season during which Ferrari won a Drivers' Championship. Oh, I'm loving the look of the bonnet. It is annoying that I'm going to have to attack those plenums again and get it so that I can actually have a little bit more clearance. The engine uh, is on very tight um, engine mounts that I've put in, so, so it's not going to move a lot, but obviously it's going to move. And uh, yeah, that can't stay like it is, but uh, I can fix that in the future. For now, that's not a big problem because we're not driving it yet. So uh, That gives you something to be going on with. It, it certainly does. I mean, <laughs> Not that you're struggling to find things. It's close, it's only two weeks away now uh, to the event and uh, I do have the coilovers now, they're ready to go in next week and there's a few other little uh, cosmetic touch-ups and I'm going to be doing everything I can to try and get this thing to uh, at least crank over and see how that goes. So hopefully you'll join me for that next week. That's um, on the YouTube video, not the time attack, right? Because that's two weeks. Two weeks to world time attack. Two weeks to world time, okay. Yes. Yes, sorry. Like, subscribe, let Jeff know what you think. He loves to read your comments. And uh, yeah, thanks for all those comments about the belly bump. That was, that was just your favorite. It was a, it was a well it was, uh, deserved uh, belly was, bump. Yeah, we just went with it. And, all, right. all right. Bye, guys. guys. See ya. Only team to still receive sponsorship from its main tobacco sponsor. No, oh my God. It's the other way around. Who owned Marlborough? No. I said it right. Which was owned by Philip Morris. Yes. Thank God for that. I led the championship with Kimi Raikkonen, 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 trading in third. During the season, from the second race onwards, Fernando Alonso and newcomer 